everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm so happy to see you all. Uh, there are seats in the front, so come closer. I'm very friendly. I mean, we've got a dog up here. Um, <laughs> Such an honor to be joining Sea Change Sessions. I'm going to try to keep the thread of hope from the stories we were hearing last night by chatting about the power of seaweed and the opportunity that, that seaweed presents in the packaging space. Um, my slides are going to go, and they're going to come any moment. It is on, and there it goes. Okay. So we'll, we'll go back. OK, revolutionizing packaging with seaweed. Uh, by way of introduction, I'll just share a little bit about myself. I'm Julia. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sway, which is a biomaterials company based in Berkeley, California. Um, I am a designer by trade. I spent 10 years building brand and packaging systems for CPGs, design studios, technology companies. So I am very intimately aware of the challenges that brands face as they aim to move away from plastics. And it was actually that frustration that inspired me to start my own company. I'm not technical, I am a designer, but I do know how to make impossible futures visible for others. And that's how I came to become obsessed with seaweed innovation, which we will talk about at length in these 20 minutes. Um, just as a little tidbit as well, I grew up next to the ocean. Um, I grew up in a town called Carmel. It's near Monterey Bay in California. So I love the ocean. I love ocean ecosystems. And really, it's my goal in all the work that I do to just uplift these ocean ecosystems. <laughs> There's a video of swim, swim with sharks. Um, so really, you know, at early in my career, I was thinking, what is the, the role of the designer in protecting people and the planet? If you're not a scientist or a chemist, how can you actually bring about solutions that are gonna impact the planet? Um, there's this quote from Dr. Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson, which loosely says, those who are closest to the problem are necessarily closest to the solutions. I was very close to the packaging problem. And so I decided to deep dive into all the existing alternatives. And I wanted to be as specific as possible, so I focused on thin film plastic. Bags, wrappers, pouches, five trillion pieces of thin film plastic are produced globally every year, and over 90% of them are not recycled, which means they go to landfill, and in landfill they blow out into natural spaces, into our sewage systems, into our oceans, where they exist for eternity, turning into microplastics that make their way into our blood, into the air we breathe, into the food that we eat. Massive problem. Um, so <laughs> to add to this kind of complexity, plastics are made from an overwhelmingly extractive system. We know this. In fact, petroleum is betting on plastic to save themselves. BP, British Petroleum, projects that over the next 20 years, 95% of net growth in demand for oil will come from plastic. And it's not going anywhere because this is the most convenient lightweight, inexpensive way of packaging just about everything. Everyone sitting in this room is wearing clothing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and all of that clothing that you have purchased at one point, whether you know it or not, whether you saw it, came packaged in a plastic bag. So I really want to drill into the plastic poly bag problem first. There's 180 of them, 180 billion of them produced every year. And I want to kind of pull out for a moment and highlight how these issues are interlinked. We have the plastic problem, a global phenomenon. The petroleum industry is exacerbating and pushing the climate crisis. And the climate crisis builds social inequity. And social inequity feeds the plastic problem. So solutions for plastic have to address each of these buckets or we're not really making change. That is the foundation of all the work that we do at Sway, is what if this ubiquitous, unavoidable, basic building block of modern society could evolve to actually restore the planet instead? That's the question. We'll see if we can do it. Uh, the foundation of all the work that we do at Sway, here's my team. This is actually a fraction of them. We're growing very quickly. We're based in the Bay. Uh, my co-founder's there on the left. He's here, right here. And uh, Russell, our, our Partnerships and Impact lead, he's right there. <laughs> um, I love my team. They're interdisciplinary. They all care deeply about our oceans. And we are building solutions that are centered and inspired around the principles of the circular economy, which we know is to design out waste and pollution, to keep materials in use, 
but also to regenerate natural systems. And I, I've talked about this before. The third pillar is often overlooked. I find that brands struggle to find ways of integrating that concept of regenerating nature into their products and into their sourcing strategies. But fortunately, at Sway, we've, we've found a way, and it's with seaweed. Seaweed has been around for a billion years. <laughs> and for a billion years, it has supported and built healthy ecosystems. It provides half of the oxygen that we breathe. It's a source of habitat for biodiverse life. 74% of all wildlife on Earth lives in the ocean. And so at Sway, it's our goal to extend that impact by using seaweed as a solution for plastics. Now, most people don't have a huge amount of familiarity with seaweed. You know it as the slippery stuff on the beach or you eat sushi, but there's actually 12,000 plus species of seaweed. 12,000 plus. <laughs> and they can be divided into reds, browns, and greens. And the way that they're used in industry today is either in food or pharmaceuticals. And what you see there on the left, those are processed seaweeds. They are the natural polymers found inside of seaweed called phycocolloids, agar, alginate, and carrageenan. You are consuming seaweed on a far more regular basis than you actually know. It's usually the thickening agent used in ice cream, in toothpaste. If you ever worked in a lab, agar petri dishes are made with that type of seaweed right there. And it's that inherent gelling capability that we use in the films that we make. So this is Sway Packaging, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, we use the natural polymers that are abundantly found in different types of seaweed to create home compostable replacements for thin film plastic. What seaweed is really good at is it can deliver total transparency, which is really sought after in the packaging world. What it's also really good at is it's quite strong. Later on, I'll, I'll show samples and you can see how strong it is. Actually, it has greater tensile strength than traditional plastics. And it's also heat sealable, which is necessary if you want to plug into existing infrastructure. Seaweed is also hydrophilic. Seaweed loves the ocean. So my engineering team is specifically focused on amplifying those beneficial properties of seaweed and then adapting them to fit into traditional plastic infrastructure and working with traditional plastic manufacturers to scale this technology. Now, I think this is such a cool opportunity because we can create a whole family, a portfolio of materials that address the different challenges that brands are facing today using these inherent properties of seaweed, whether that's in texture or color or strength. And I'll show you, we'll, we'll, we'll pass around some samples now. We're now able to plug into existing plastic infrastructure with this material so that big plastic can get on board with the bio-based revolution. Now, that's the first pillar, the most important piece, is being compatible with existing infrastructure. But the second is that we have to design for reality. And the reality is most people don't have access to compost. They don't recycle. Most likely, at least in the beginning, this material is going to go to landfill. So we have to design for that reality. That's how we actually design a more inclusive climate movement, is we, uh, we design for the reality that most people don't have access to this infrastructure, or even the knowledge. And so this material is designed to decompose slower than a, faster than a corn cob, but slower than a banana peel, if you can envision that. So if it does go to landfill, it's still gonna decompose rapidly, naturally, without the need for high temperatures or special conditions. It's designed that you can mix it in with your food scraps on your kitchen counter or in your backyard compost. It can go to industrial compost and degrade even faster. And in this way, we're contributing to a system of biological circularity. Different from mechanical circularity, which is recycling, we're actually returning nutrients to the natural cycle of things. And seaweed is especially well positioned to do this because it carries nutritional content. We've done early testing with soil uh, control labs and we've validated that this material carries valuable CPK content for composters, which will incentivize them to accept our packaging as a valuable soil amendment. That's not something plastic can do, and it's not something that most plastics can do. And then the third piece, we have compatibility with existing infrastructure, we have home compostability. The third piece is telling the story of seaweed to catch people's attention. If they're, most people are not paying attention, uh, we see packaging as an opportunity to tell 
educational stories to consumers about the materials they interact with on a daily basis. And to do that, we tell the story of seaweed. Seaweed grows on every coastline in the world, amounting to 7 million square kilometers. That's roughly equivalent to the size of the Amazon rainforest, both in geographic but also climate contribution to this planet. So we don't know it and we don't talk about it, but there's actually an underwater ocean rainforest already growing today. And seaweed is farmed on every coastline in the world because it's inexpensive to cultivate. You don't need fresh water. You just need ocean water. You don't need pesticides. You don't need a whole lot of equipment. It grows quickly, 20 to 30 times faster than corn or sugarcane. And we can use this material from all over the world. We primarily work with farms that are based in North and South America because we want to source seaweed that comes from as close to home as possible. But there are seaweed farms, a network of seaweed farms that we're working with today to showcase the potential that seaweed presents and the opportunity that Sway can be a private sector representative, increasing demand for this ocean material. A concern that we have is what happens if we want to replace all plastics with seaweed? That's a question we get all the time. Currently today, it's estimated there's about 35 million metric tons of seaweed being cultivated around the world. If Sway were to use, let's say, 25% of that seaweed, we would be able to replace about, oh, sorry, <laughs> I switched my stats. If we were to try to replace a quarter of all plastics, we would utilize about 32% of globally cultivated seaweeds. So that's not insignificant. But the amount of seaweed being cultivated each decade doubles. And as we see increased demand for this type of seaweed, we collaborate with different research organizations to ensure that we're diversifying the types of seaweed that we work with, that we're distributing the regions that we work with, and that we're engaging local stakeholders from the beginning to ensure that our presence there recirculates value and it doesn't fall into the same pitfalls of terrestrial agriculture. In the same way that there is a regenerative agriculture movement, there's also a regenerative aquaculture movement. As my colleague Russell likes to say, Right now, it feels like we're in a little bit of a seaweed renaissance. Have other folks seen seaweed in innovations happening? Show of hands. Yeah. <laughs> OK, it's true. Seaweed renaissance is in the works. You're seeing seaweed being used as a protein source in hamburgers and bacon. You can use seaweed to help um, mitigate the effects of methane emissions in cattle and livestock. Uh, you can use seaweed to create fibers and replace, swap out some of those dangerous plastics that are in our clothing. And you can also use seaweed as a, a climate mitigation tool, and it's being planted all over the world for that purpose. So with all this innovation and excitement happening in the seaweed space, we really have to pay close attention to how we source this material. Um, one of my favorite parts of the work that we're doing right now is not just working with the phycocolloids I described earlier, but actually integrating milled and whole leaf seaweeds. This means that we can work with small scale farmers like Atlantic Sea Farms, which is just up the coast in Maine. They're doing incredible work bringing lobster fishermen into the blue economy, harvesting kelp, and then we are able to represent a new opportunity beyond food, but for replacing packaging by working with this milled seaweed. It's a lower lift for smaller coastal communities in transitional economies. So there's a social component to this work as well. In this way, we can move from the take, make, dispose models of the past, these extractive supply chains, and instead move towards supply, uh, regenerative or restorative supply chains where we're creating life and restoring the planet at every step of the supply chain. What the seaweed is doing in the water, what people are doing with their packaging on land, and where the material ends up after it's been used, turning into healthy soil. I'll just talk a little bit about some of the highlights you've maybe seen in the news related to seaweed. There's some contentious but new emerging science coming out around seaweed's capacity to sequester carbon. Today, we know that seaweed already sequesters 173 million tons of carbon annually, according to research done by Dr. Carlos Duarte. And I highly recommend anyone who's very excited about this space to read the Ocean's 2050 research on seaweed's capacity to sequester carbon around the world. 
We also have an opportunity to invest in research related to the habitat preservation capacity of seaweed farms. The idea that farming seaweed can actually contribute to biodiversity and bio, uh, biosecurity and mitigate for the risks of disease and pests. Third, seaweed naturally buffers ocean acidification and can serve as a bioremediation tool. So the more seaweed we plant, hypothetically, the less acidification we're seeing in our waters and the healthier we can envision other aquaculture can be. And then fourth, I'd mentioned already, this is my favorite, the capacity of seaweed to provide sustainable coastal employment to communities that have been affected by overfishing or climate change. The World Bank um, um, estimates that for food alone, seaweed farming can represent the creation of 100 million new jobs. So imagine seaweed packaging layered on top of that. I hope that this kind of layers well onto what I was trying to describe earlier about this interconnectedness. If we work to address the plastic problem, we can also work to address the climate crisis and these social inequities. And that's reflected in the way that our material moves into the world. We're not just combating plastic pollution by making a material that composts at the end of its life into non-toxic parts, but we're actually reducing demand for petroleum. And ultimately, by making a material that can be accessible to anyone, we're building a more inclusive environmental movement and expanding access to responsible consumption. So I'll just bring it back to that point I was mentioning in the very beginning. I'm a designer. I'm not a scientist. Uh, I imagine that many of you in this room are not technical either, but I invite you to reflect on which problems you're closest to, because I imagine you're also quite close to the solution.